Okay, so uh, in this video, we are going to see how to construct a network diagram. Now, unit number three is uh, related with network analysis. It contains three topics CPM, that is critical path method, then the next topic is project crashing, and the last topic is called. For all three topics, the basic requirement is construction of a network diagram. So, first of all, we should learn how to construct a network diagram. Now, a basic concept is activity and event. An activity is represented by an arrow and it, it may be given name, it may not be given name. An event is either the starting point of an activity or ending point of an activity. An event is also called as a node. Okay, so either event or node. This circle is called either event or a node and this arrow is called activity. So, activity is always represented by arrow and event or node is always represented by a circle. Now, if you see this question, a small project consists of following activities, construct a network diagram for the project and identify critical path and project completion time. Now, if you see the activities, they are given in terms of numbers and these numbers are the numbers of the respective events. For example, event number 1, event number 2. So, activity 1, 2 is the activity which connects event number 1 and event number 2. How do we interpret this? Event number 1 is the start of the activity and event number 2 is the end of the activity. And okay, So, that is why this relationship is called node relationship. It means when the activity is expressed in terms of its events. Okay. So, now we will see how to construct a network diagram for this. So, the first step is construction of network diagram. Now, if you can see here, if you read this, first activity is 1, 2 and second is 1, 3. It means from event number 1. Now, event number 1 represents the start of the project. Okay, and the project is consisting of these eight activities. So, event number one is the start of the project. And if you observe here, from event number one, there are two activities which are starting: one, two, and one, three. So, this is event number two, and this is event number three. And we join this. This is activity one, two, and this is activity one, three. Okay. Then. So, these two activities are over. It means what? This is the starting point of the project and there are two activities which are starting simultaneously. 1, 2 is starting at the same time 1, 3 is also starting. Then from 2 there is one activity 2, 4. So, we draw one more event here that is event number 4 and we join it. This is activity 2, 4. The next activity is 2, 5. So, it is also starting from event number 2. Okay, So, we take event number 5 here and we join this and we say this is activity 2, 5. Then the next activity is 3, 5. So, from 3 to 5. So, we join this and this is what we call activity 3, 5. Then next is 4, 6. So, we can take event number 6 here and we join this and this is activity 4, 6. Next is 5, 6. So, from 5 to 6, so we join this activity. This is activity 5, 6. And the last activity is 6, 7. So, we take event 7 here and we join this and we say this is activity 6, 7. So, how do we see this? This is a project of 8 activities in certain sequence. As per this sequence, event number 1 is the start of the project, event number 7 is the end of the project. Then, the time is given. We will represent time under every arrow. So, 1, 2 time is 5 days, 1, 3 is 7 days. 2, 4 is 3 days, 2, 5 is 4 days, 3, 5 is 3 days, 4, 6, 2 days, 5, 6, 4 days and 6, 7 is 1 day. Now, network diagram is complete. Now, we go to the next question, identification of critical path. So, before going to critical path, we should understand what is the path. So, we will find paths in the network. Paths in the network diagram. A path is 
in how many ways you can go from the start of the project to the end of the market. So the first part is the straight line going from above that is connecting 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. So the first part is 1 to 2, then 2 to 4, then 4 to 6 and 6 to 7. So 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. When you add the time along the path, you will get the length of the path or the total time of the path. So it is 5, 5 plus 3, 8, 8 plus 2, 10, 10 plus 1, 11. So it is 11 days. This is the total time of path number 1. Similarly, a second path possible is 1, 2. Now instead of 4 coming down in 5. So 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. Now calculating the path, time of the path, 5, 5 plus 4, 9, 9 plus 4, 13, 13 plus 1, 14. So it is 14 days. And third, now the above paths are over, now the below one, 1, 3, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7. So now time we will add. 7, 7 plus 3, 10, 10 plus 4, 14, 14 plus 1, 15, 15 days. So we have 3 paths, 11 days, 14 days and 15 days. Now out of this, we will select the longest path. So this is the longest path and you should highlight it with a double line. Okay, so we will highlight that with a double line. So 1, 3, then 3, 5. 5, 6 and 6, 7. Okay. So this path is called the critical path. So the meaning of critical path is it is the longest path in the network. Okay. And the project completion time is also equal to our critical path. So we can say project completion time. is equal to 15 days. So project completion time is always equal to the critical path. Okay. Then another concept you should understand is critical activities and non-critical activities. The critical activities are those activities which are there on the critical path. So for this example, see activity 1, 3 is critical, then 3, 5 is a critical activity, 5, 6 is a critical activity and 6, 7 is a critical activity. All other activities of the network which are not on the critical path, they are called non-critical activities. So 1, 2, 1, 2 is non-critical, 2, 2, 4 is non-critical, 2, 5 non-critical and 4, 6 non-critical. So those activities which are not on the critical path are called non-critical activities. Okay, so this is how we construct the network diagram based on node relationship. Now in this question, if you see the data, okay, small project consists of following activities, draw network diagram, find critical path and project completion time. Now this activity and preceding activity is given. That is why this kind of relationship is called precedence relationship. Now this is not a node relationship. The numbers of the nodes are not given, but activity and preceding activity is given. So that is why it's called a precedence or preceding relationship. Now in this kind of question, it is better to first draw a constructor rough diagram. Now this column, preceding activity column is very important. Now this will tell you certain information. First thing, for A there is no preceding activity and for B also there is no preceding activity. It means A and B are starting activities. So it means the project has two starting activities A and B, something like this. Then 
after A, so you can read this table in the reverse way. So you can say for C preceding is A, it means after A there is C. So you can say after A there is activity C and then after B there is activity D. So this is just a rough construction. Then from C there are two activities E and F. And then after G, for G the, there are two preceding activities D and E. It means G starts after completion of two activities D and E. It means for G a starting point is common point of end of D and E. So wherever D and E are ending, that from that point G is starting. It means D and E will merge. This is called merging. Merging of two activities means two activities joining together. So it means D and E should merge with each other. From where is E starting? E is starting after C. So here C ends and then E will start but you can see here that D and E have to merge together. So you draw E in this way. So you bring E down. Okay. So if you keep E like this separate and D here is separate then uh, you cannot draw activity G. So that is why this merging is required. And then from C there is another activity that is F. And from D and D e, there is the last activity that is G. Now after F and G there is no other activity. It means F and G are the last activities. So they will not remain hanging like this. Then instead what should happen is this F and G they should merge together. So F and G they should merge together in a common point. Okay, so it can't remain hanging like this. So now we can draw a fair diagram. So we will draw network diagram. A and B are starting activities that we already identified. So this is A and B. So A and B are starting activities. Then after A there is C. So after A there is activity C. And then after B there is activity D. After B there is activity D. After C there is activity E. And we have concluded that D and E they should merge because G is coming from D and E. So this E will come and it will merge with D. Then F, after C there is another activity F. So we can draw here F. And G is the last activity which is coming from D and E. And here also we have seen that F and G are the last activities so they should merge together. So this G will go together with F and it will merge. Because project should have only one starting point and only one ending point. Okay, so now we will write the time. A is 4, B is 2, C is 6, D is 4, E is 4, F is 8 and G is 3. And now we can also give the numbers to these nodes. Okay. Even if it is a precedence relationship, you can still give numbers to the nodes. So let this be 1. 1 is always the starting point. So 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. This node number 6 or event number 6 is the end of the project. Okay. And now we can calculate the paths in the network. That is the second. Paths in the network diagram. So the first path. Now the names of the activities are given. So now we will write paths using the name of the activity. See the first path is going from above. One is the starting point, six is the ending point. So that is A, C, F going straight from above. So the first path is ACF. Time of the path 4 plus 6, 10, 10 plus 8, 18 days. So ACF is 18 days. So the second path is A, C, then coming down E, A, C, E and G. So the second path is A, C, E, G. So 4, 4 plus 6, 10, 10 plus 4, 14, 14 plus 3, 17. The third path, now A is over, the third path is B, B, D, G. This is 
time is 2, 2 plus 4, 6, 6 plus 3, 9. 9 days. So the longest path out of this is AC, ACF, that is 18 days. So that is our critical path. Okay, so ACF, that we will highlight A, C, F. This is our critical path. It means A, C and F, they are the critical activities because they are on the critical path. And which are the non-critical activities? They are B, D, E, G. These are the non-critical activities. Okay, another thing, uh, the second longest path, that is 17 days, it is called subcritical path. Okay, so subcritical path means the second longest path in the network. And uh, critical path is 18 days, so that means that project completion time is 18 days. So we will write conclusion. Project completion time is 18 days. Okay, so this is how we solve a network given in a precedence relationship. So first, try to construct a rough diagram. Uh, this column will give a lot of information like wherever there is a dash. Dash means starting activities. So there is a dash here. So it means A and B are starting activities. Then uh, D and E are together. After D and E, G is starting. It means D and E have to merge together. And second, uh, F and G they remain in the end. F and G. So they can't remain hanging like this. So if there are two ending activities, again they have to merge together in a common point or a common event like this. Okay, so this is how we draw a network diagram from a precedence relationship.